Health officials in Grenada encouraged by the reduction recorded in the country's COVID-19 positivity rate. Details to this story and more in the National Report. Welcome back. With the details to the news for Tuesday, September 21st, 2021, I am Sherry Ann Noel. Health officials in Grenada are encouraged by the reduction recorded in the country's COVID-19 positivity rate. Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles said two weeks ago the positivity rate was averaging 30%, which reflected that one in three persons had the virus, and he had cautioned that a greater percentage of the population was at risk of contracting the virus. However, following two consecutive no-movement weekends, during which widespread testing was conducted across the country, Dr. Charles said the positivity rate has decreased to just over 18%. From our testing over the past days, um, uh, we, have, we are seeing some signs that that positivity rate is going down. Uh, at least on the, on the 18th, we had an average positivity around 23%, and on the 19th, um, we had an overall around 14%. So over that weekend, about 18.2% uh, of all the persons who were tested, and we did quite a number of tests. Um, Dr. Um, Mayana um, mentioned the, um, the number a short, a while, a short while ago. And overall, we saw that about 18%, 18% of persons who came out to get tested uh, were positive. Dr. Charles says while the decline in positivity rate is an encouraging sign, it is one that his team is paying very close attention to. Because, one, um, we are increasing, we have increased significantly the number of tests that we're doing, so we are testing more individuals. Um, secondly, we recognize that given that this is a very infectious disease, many persons um, may have already been infected and recovered. And um, um, for, uh, after testing, now these individuals will turn up negative. So it's still very early, and we continue to to look on carefully. We know that we are seeing um, better adoption of the recommendations, the wearing of the masks and 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 um, sanitizing and, and and all of that, and of course the measures that the government has has, has put in place are also um, are also starting to bear um, some fruit, but it is not a time to be, to be complacent. The acting chief medical officer has warned against complacency given the drop in the positivity rate. He emphasized that vaccination remains a critical tool for the protection of the population as well as adherence to the recommended protocols. I don't want to convey a false sense of that we are over the hill and, and it's, it's all going to be good. Um, we do our best to control and to, uh, and, and, and to prevent um, this pandemic. There will come a time when the disease has reached every susceptible person and then the only way is down. But that is until the next variant or so. So yes, um, the signs point to us arriving at a point where the number of, of, of cases um, may soon be less. In fact, we are, we are seeing signs. This is not a time to, to, um, to celebrate. This is a time to be cautious and to continue to ensure that those signs are actually correct and that is not, uh, you know. So we encourage everyone to continue to follow, um, follow the, um, the protocols. And like I say, we need to build our vaccination coverage. That is the only way we're going to be comfortable. All right, and that's the only, that's the best way we'll be able to face the next 
um, the next variant and the, and the next wave, um, if it does, uh, does appear. Moving along, to date, Grenada has recorded 4,213 cases of COVID-19 since March 2020. Of that number, 1,813 have recovered, with 2,337 active cases. Nine of the active cases are imported, and the remaining 2,328 are locally transmitted. Providing an overview on the country's COVID-19 data, medical officer attached to the Ministry of Health, Dr. Mayana Charles, said 53% of the positive cases are females and 47% males, ranging in age from 2 months to 103 years. A closer look at the data revealed that 85% of the positive cases are unvaccinated, while 10% is fully vaccinated and 5% received their first dose of the vaccine. It has been confirmed that breakthrough infections are possible in vaccinated persons, but what the vaccine does is reduce the likelihood of severe illness, hospitalization, and death. As of September 20th, there are 79 patients currently warded at hospitals, 55 at the General Hospital, 11 at Princess Alice, 10 at the Mungay Hospital, and 3 at Princess Royal in Karikou. At the time of Tuesday's press briefing, there were 63 cumulated deaths. 48 recorded at the three hospitals and 15 within communities, including care facilities. 97% of the deaths were individuals who were not vaccinated. So, with news as it relates to COVID-19, Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles is concerned that successes being recorded in the fight against COVID-19 can be jeopardized if there isn't a change in the behavioral pattern among Grenadians. With 2,337 active COVID-19 cases and 63 deaths and an increase in hospitalization, Dr. Charles said he is dissatisfied with the behavior of some Grenadians who continue to blatantly disregard the regulations in place to protect citizens from the spread of the virus. Dr. Charles, while addressing members of the media in Tuesday's post-cabinet press briefing, said the behavior of some individuals makes the work more difficult for health professionals while putting themselves and others at risk. A personal observation I have made is that there are some popular rum shops or liming areas, liming spots, where there are a, young, a number of young and middle-aged men and a few women in between them. They can be seen sitting and behaving as if nothing has happened. All right? The proprietors of these establishments seem to have a high tolerance for having these persons gather, not wear masks, and just um, leaving it up. And then these individuals return to their families and they carry the disease with them, and they pass it on to persons who are frail, and then they go on to suffer the severe consequences. He described the behavior to gather in groups without wearing masks and observing the recommended physical distance as irresponsible. Sometimes even after curfew hours, you still see some popular rum shops with gatherings. Um, this is not this is not a joke. This is not something to be taken lightly. All right? So we encourage these individuals, they're adults, we encourage them to be more responsible. All right? We should not be seeing large gatherings outside of rum shops of persons not wearing masks, not distancing. All right? This is a very irresponsible way to behave. Dr. Charles also revealed that there are persons who test positive and refuse to isolate, returning to their various communities and endangering the lives of others. There are individuals who are denying at all cost when they are when they test positive that they have COVID. They completely refuse to accept the diagnosis or the test result. That they, have, um, that they have tested positive for COVID. And as such, they go about, they move around in, in, in the community, and they spread the disease. All right, they spread it to others. And then the disease can reach the vulnerable.
All right, all of this needs to stop. This is the National Report. The news will return after the break. This is a message from the Ministry of Health. If you or a family member suspect that you may have contracted COVID-19 and are displaying symptoms, please immediately self-isolate at home. This means that you must also avoid all contact with other members of your household. Do not visit hospitals or health centers as this creates the potential for further spread of the virus and it puts additional persons at risk when you come into contact with them. Your best course of action is to call the COVID-19 hotline at 458-4787 or 538 4787 or contact your nearest health center or medical station. Once your information has been received, health officials will come to you. Help prevent the spread of COVID-19. This has been a message from the Ministry of Health. Welcome back. Work is progressing on the St. John River Flood Mitigation Project, which is divided into four packages. Package 1 is entrance to Green Bridge, Package 2 the Humback Bridge, Package 3 the area behind the post office, and Package 4 the area close to Steele's Auto. On Monday, the GIS visited the project site and spoke with members of Sunrise Construction Company, Inc., who are presently executing Package 3 and 4 of the project. Packages 3 and 4 of the project, which includes excavation work and construction of retaining walls and installation of gabion baskets, is expected to be completed in four months from the August 19 commencement date, weather permitting. What uh, we have to do is to excavate the base of the existing walls so the consultants can check the integrity of the walls and make an assessment whether we should demolish the walls and build brand new walls or the integrity is sustainable so we can pour a toe or a kicker and then build a wall in front of it and a wall at the back of it but encapsulate the present wall in our excavation and our construction methodology. We have done the investigation and now we have an instruction to proceed by strengthening the existing wall by putting in new footings and added reinforcement so we can construct new walls in front of the existing walls. Deputy Project Manager Brad Daniels spoke to the specifics of the scope of work. He said the consultants have completed most of the investigations, making way for the forward movement of the project. The project um, encompasses retaining walls and, uh, and Gibeon baskets, so Gibeon field baskets. So we have um, many different types of retaining walls and uh, within these retaining walls we, we're looking at an average height of about four meters which will be the tallest height from the base of the river up, I'm going up. So it's about four meters high. Um, for the, the retain, most of the retaining walls will be on the right hand side of the river and the Gabion baskets will be the left hand side of the river. And as well, the excavation we're looking at to open up the riverbed to about six meters wide, average wide. So that, you know, because presently it might be a little bit smaller, but at the end of the project, we're looking at an average of six meters wide of the riverbed. Um, I can tell you a little bit about the reinforcement which is going in the retaining walls. Um, it would be, we're looking at what, steel size from one inch to three quarter to a half inch, um, a minimal amount of, of, of tree eight steel. Quantity Severa at Sunrise Construction Company Inc. Luke Braffitt says given the present state of affairs in Grenada, his company has ensured that most of the material needed was procured locally. Generally, we, the project, we were trying to get most of the major procurement island, items on island locally procured from the various hardware stores and, you know, um, retailers on island. Um, there are a few elements that are not readily available in Grenada, for instance, the Gabion baskets and so, which would have to be internationally procured. Um, but for the most part, I would say about 75% of the materials in use here are procured locally. Work on package 3 and 4 of the St. John's Flood Mitigation Project is happening simultaneously, with 45 men presently employed with a possible expansion to the team to 100 as the project progresses. 
And finally, in the news, residents of Guangkai community in the Poinsalin area are now one step closer to having a proper access road to their homes. Government has begun phase one of the project to excavate what was once a footpath to facilitate most rebel access for the residents. On Monday, the GIs visited the area and spoke with Akish Rogers of Frontline Construction Services on the scope of work presently being carried out. What happened exactly here is um, 700 feet of road, basically. Basically, it was a footpath and we created just a nice enough area so we can drive through. No drains at the moment. All we have here is just um, we widen at five and six feet in some areas and it will be left as is for now. From start to finish, we took 10 days. Yeah. So it's fair to say this is just the first phase? This is just the first phase. The government, though faced with many challenges in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic, is continuing to make good on its promise to deliver vital infrastructural development to various communities. And with this story, we come to the end of the National Report for Tuesday, September 21st, 2021. On behalf of the entire news and the production team, I am Sharia Noel, Thank you for viewing.